An autopsy report is giving us new insight into what happened at a quadruple murder scene in Oregon. The first words that came out of my mouth were he did something to her. This morning, we hear from a friend of a missing Colorado mom. She says she saw red flags before Kelsey Barrett disappeared. Washington State is trying to end the backlog of thousands of rape kits. A new proposal could speed up that process. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News on the CW22, 7 a.m. now on this Wednesday. I'm Brittany Bailey. And I'm Jen York. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. We do have a number of school delays and closures for you this morning. The full list is posted on creme.com. It's also scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We can quickly run through the list. Of course, it's a very long list. Uh, so if you hear your name uh, throughout the show, just, you know, or wondering if any of your closures change, definitely stay tuned to the website. So here we go for two hour delays. We have Columbia, Wellpinit, Valley, Quincy, Ephrata, Colville, Moses Lake, Evergreen, Newport, Reardon, Edwall, Pullman, Nine Mile Falls, Wilbur Creston, Davenport, Freeman, Cheney, Liberty, Deer Park, Medical Lake, Chewila, Colfax, Keller, Kendrick, Sprague Lamont, Tico, Great Northern, Inchilium, Central Valley, Mary Walker, Odessa, Genesee, Nespelum, Elmira, Garfield Palouse, St. John Endicott, Kettle Falls, Steptoe, White Pine, Summit Valley, Loon Lake, Harrington, Lind Ritzville, Libby, Rosalia, and Orchard Prairie, all on a two hour delay. Now we have a three hour delay. Orient is on a three hour delay, a 90 minute delay for East Valley, a one hour delay for Tenasket. And Jen alluded to this just a moment ago that some of these delays are turning into closures that just happened. The Reardon Edwall district is now closed this morning after being on a delay, but now closed, joining the rest on this list of closures. Kellogg, Lake Ponderay, Moscow, Post Falls, St. Mary's, West Bonner County, Coeur d'Alene, the Idaho STEM Charter Academy, Kootenai, Lakeland, Wilson Creek, Plummer Worley, and Riverside. So that is your complete list. Again, as Jen mentioned, you can find it online and on the bottom of your screen. Now we want to find out what is causing all of this and send things over to Evan Narani in the Weather Center this morning. And Evan, we've been getting some interesting figures when it comes to those 24 hour totals. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, over the 24 hours or a single day total, we've been seeing uh, between four and six inches through most estimates. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the snow has been falling for those 24 hours, but it's a measurement of just how long over the course of one day that we've seen uh, that snowfall. So as we take a look out towards satellite radar, you can see that uh, we are still seeing some of that snow activity over North Idaho. A lot of that uh, transformation into rain activity is what we see where the green uh, picks up over North Idaho over just the last several hours. Uh, on uh, our watches and warnings, you can see we do still have that winter storm warning in effect for everywhere in pink, winter weather advisory in purple. Spokane has seen all of their uh, watches and warnings expire this morning because things have calmed down quite a bit. Now on the 12 hour forecast, we are still seeing temperatures make their way to the upper 30s. That is going to be good for seeing a lot of that snow melt, but we are still seeing chances of it over the next several hours. Those chances drop off by about 9 and 10 a.m. where we're looking at cloudy skies. May even see the sun peak out toward our afternoon hours. Now, of course, this morning, quite a different situation. Slick roads outside, plenty of school delays, and that is why we want to check in with Creme 2's Kara Alfallen, who's in the mobile storm tracker this morning, to let us know what the roads look like right now. Hi, uh, Kira. Yes, good morning, Evan. Well, we are in North Idaho right now. We're in Coeur d'Alene. I can definitely see why they closed schools here. Uh, we're seeing a rain and snow mix fall from the sky right now. Things are looking not so great on the roads out here. You're seeing a lot of uh, slick conditions with the slush out here. Uh, those snow berms that you can see on the side of the road uh, make you uh, able to tell just how bad it got out here. You can see that they plowed um, out here, but still not looking so good as that rain snow mix snow mix continues to fall out here. Slick conditions this morning. Again, schools are closed out here in Coeur d'Alene, and you're going to want to give yourself extra time as you make your way out on your commute this morning. Things are a little bit slick on the way here to Coeur d'Alene. We did see um, some cars that were off the side of I-90 um, because of the conditions here, so just a good idea. Overall, give yourself extra time this morning and definitely take it easy. For now, I'm going to send it over to Amber, who has a look at traffic. Kara, good morning. Well, we're taking a look at different DOT cams in our area, and for the most part, the main roads do seem fairly clear. Uh, the snow seems to have melted in that area. 
<clears throat> possibly because of the amount of cars that are on the road, uh, just kind of uh, getting rid of that snow, but it's still going to be wet outside on those roadways, so you could run into some slick conditions, even if you're not driving through the snow. So definitely something to keep in mind before you start your morning commute. I would give yourself a few extra minutes uh, because of these winter weather conditions we are seeing. That's all I have for now, so I will go ahead and send it back to the studio. Amber, thank you so much. It is 7.05 now. We are learning more about the grim scene at the site of a quadruple murder. The autopsy report is giving us a glimpse at why the case is taking such a toll on Clackamas County first responders. Investigators say three of the victims were stabbed to death and another died from a combination of blunt force trauma. The report shows the suspect used an ax and a knife. Investigators say 42 year old Mark Gago killed his mother, stepfather, girlfriend and a nine month old child. Deputies say they shot Gago as he was attacking an eight year old girl. That girl and another woman were the only survivors. A close friend of missing Colorado mom Kelsey Barrett is talking about her friend's disappearance. Ashley Cogburn says she saw red flags in Barrett's relationship with fiance Patrick Frazee. She said she noticed a few things, including how Frazee was always mad about something. The things that he would say to her were somewhat demeaning. I remember one time in particular, she came to me and she was just crying. And Kelsey is just, she's a tough girl. And I can't remember specifics, but I just remember gathering. This person is borderline emotionally abusive to you right now. Cogburn says she had at times encouraged Barrett to end her relationship with Frazee, but Barrett believed she could still make it work. Barrett has not been seen since she was captured on surveillance video Thanksgiving Day. Investigators say she is presumed dead. Frazee is charged with her murder. Investigators do not believe he acted alone. Today, the Washington State Patrol is relaunching a statewide effort to find missing children. WSP will be displaying posters of missing children on semi-truck trailers. Those trailers will be traveling around the state. The program is called Homeward Bound. It is to honor a Tacoma girl who went missing 20 years ago. She was just two years old at the time. Tika Lewis will be the first child featured in the Homeward Bound program. WSP is partnering with a trucking company based out of Blaine. Thousands of DNA kits are sitting on the shelves of police stations and crime labs across Washington state. A lack of resources means it can take years to process one kit. But there is a move in Olympia to shorten that shelf life to 45 days. One rape survivor testified in favor of the bill. She says making survivors wait more than a year for justice sends a message. It feels like the truth that the system isn't created to hold perpetrators accountable. And it feels like women's bodies and lives don't matter. The bill calls for $7.5 million over the next two years and another $5 million the following two years. Washington State Patrol troopers say the money would be used to hire more scientists to process those kits. The money could also fund new equipment to speed up the process. We mentioned this story to you last week, but it looks like there is a problem growing nationwide. Idaho courts are facing a major shortage on court reporters. In the entire state of Idaho, there are only 45 of them. Court reporters are responsible for typing out every single thing said in court for the official record. If those positions are not filled, court administrators say there could be major consequences. That includes case outcomes being overturned because of a lack of an official record. The president of the Idaho Court Reporters Association says in the next five to ten years, a majority of Idaho's court reporters will reach retirement age. We are the official record of what happened in that courtroom, so without us, there is no record. And if we don't have new reporters to fill those positions, it's really going to affect the legal community very negatively in Idaho. Last week, the Joint Finance Appropriations Committee received a request for more than $300,000 to boost court reporter salaries. If approved, court reporters would see their pay go from an average of about $53,000 a year to nearly $59,000 a year. A dramatic rescue unfolded at Yosemite National Park. The California Highway Patrol crew captured it all on camera. Two hikers from England got lost after they tried to hike from North Dome to Yosemite Valley. Both men lost the trail in the snow and realized they were trapped in a crevasse. They were faced with a 2,000-foot drop 
and could not turn around. Well, the hikers did have cell service. The men called 911 but had to spend the night in the park. The CHP crew rescued the hikers the following morning. Now keep in mind, national parks are still open during the shutdown, but many of them are not staffed with park rangers right now. We'll talk about a close call. Snowstorms are moving through parts of the Midwest. The winter weather is causing some problems for drivers. We'll take a look. One Ooh. sheriff's deputy in Wisconsin was pulled over to help a driver who slid off the road. And as you see there, walking back to the patrol car, another driver loses control and nearly hits him. No one was hurt, but deputies say this video serves as a reminder to slow down. Mm, let's see it one more time. It's a good thing that he heard what was happening there. Yeah, look behind My him because initially he was just walking back to his car. Ooh. I believe that may have been the make and model of my vehicle. So ah. that scares me about being <laughs> careful on the roadways. Yikes. All right. Glad everyone is OK there. 711 on the dot now. Well, if you are gearing up to watch the Super Bowl, deal boss Matt Granite has one piece of tech to upgrade your sound system. And outside, we are still seeing some of that snow and rain linger around the northwest. Find out just how long to expect it throughout the day.